Okay, so welcome back to the second video on artificial lipid bilayers. So now let's discuss um, the uh, actual uses of creating an artificial lipid bilayer. So let's turn over the page and discuss the actual uses of it. So basically what you would do is you'd create two tanks like this. So here is um, two tanks basically and then you'd have in, in between joining the two tanks, what you would put is you put an artificial lipid by there, basically, in between this little gap uh, connecting the two tanks, okay? So here is our artificial lipid by there. Again, I won't draw any more. So this is the artificial lipid by there here. Right, and then what you would do is you would ensure that there was a certain electrical potential difference between uh, these two tanks, artificial lipid by there, okay? And what you would do is you connect basically, you'd have a solution in here and a solution in here, and you'd connect the two solutions with uh, electrodes basically. So you'd have a negative electrode over here, which is uh, the cathode, and then a positive electrode over here, which is the anode. Okay, and you'd obviously need to have a battery connected between them to uh, maintain uh, this electrical potential difference. Okay, so what's going to happen is that the battery is going to have a certain electrical potential difference between uh, the two sides of it. And these two metal rods here, which I've called a cathode and an anode, but effectively what they are is two metal rods, are going to become electrically in equilibrium with the side of the battery to which they are connected. So there's a certain electrical potential difference across between these two sides of the battery and basically the electrical potential of this metal rod is going to be the same as the electrical potential of this side of the battery and the electrical potential of this side of, the, of this metal rod is going to be in a, the same as the electrical potential here. So the electrical potential difference between these two is going to be the same as the electrical potential difference between these two. Now, these will go into equilibrium with the solution as well. So the electrical potential, uh, potential of this solution here, and this side of the um, tank is known as the trans side, and this side is known as the cis side. Okay, so um, the uh, electrical potential of this trans side of the tank is going to be in equilibrium with this anode, and that's in equilibrium with this side of the battery, so they're all going to have the same electrical potential, and similarly on this side, this one is going to have the same electrical potential as this metal rod, and the metal rod is going to go into equilibrium with the cis tank. So all of these are going to have the same electrical potential. So if there's an electrical potential difference between these two sides of the battery, then the two tanks will have that same electrical potential difference across them, this voltage. Okay, and I've said that this one is more negative, the cathode, which is why I've drawn the short arm of the battery, and this one is more positive, the anode. Okay, so uh, basically the electrical potential of this one is greater than the electrical potential of this one. So the cis side of the tank basically usually is represents the cytosolic side. We're going to basically... Um, view that as being the equivalent of the cytosolic compartment and trans we will view as the equivalent of extracellular and what we can do is we can ensure that the electrical potential difference between these two tanks uh, is going to be the same as it would be between uh, the extracellular and the intracellular compartment. We've made it, we've set it up so that this one will be negative and this one will be positive so if we make this one lower in electrical potential by negative 65 millivolts compared to this one, then um, basically we will have got the correct electrical potential difference from extracellular to intracellular, or from trans to cis, basically. The electrical potential difference from trans to cis will be negative 65 millivolts, and that will be um, mirroring what the real electrical potential difference from the extracellular compartment to the intracellular compartment is in in vivo, basically. Okay, so what we can now do is we can take maybe a potentially an unknown protein from cells and we can stick it into this artificial lipid bilayer, basically, and we can look at conductance of ions 
through that channel, basically. So, this is the idea. If we purify an unknown protein, so let's say we've got some unknown membrane-bound protein, which we have managed to purify. So this is an unknown protein. Yeah, so it's a new specimen, but we've managed to purify it. And now what we want to know is if we stick it into the membrane, will it conduct or not, basically? What we could do is we could stick it into this artificial bilayer, a lipid bilayer that we've created, and we've got the correct electrical potential difference in here, and that, then what we can do is look at conductance. We can measure the current moving through it, and the reason we can measure the current moving through it is, let me show you. If I, uh, if I draw here this artificial lipid bilayer just as two layers, so basically what I've done is I have... Um, taken this bit of the drawing out here, and I'm putting it here now. So this, I've now put our unknown protein in. Now let's say it conducts sodium. So, if I put a high concentration of sodium in the trans compartment, and a low concentration of sodium in the cis compartment, then um, it may move sodium into the cell, basically, or into the cis compartment, because both the concentration gradient favours the movement of sodium in, and the voltage that I've put across here of negative 65 millivolts favours the movement of sodium in. Okay, uh, so how do we measure that? How, how would we be aware that there was a current going through? Well, when it moves sodium ions through, let's say this is a sodium ion, then that sodium ion is going to come over into this compartment. You are moving positive charge from this trans compartment into this cis compartment. Now, what's that going to do? That is going to disturb the electrical potentials of this trans compartment and the electrical potentials of this cis compartment. Basically, you're moving positive charge out of here and into here. So the electrical potential of the trans compartment will go down and the electrical potential of the cis compartment will go up, i.e. this one will become more positive and this one will become less positive. Okay, right. So, the battery isn't going to like that at all, because now the electrical potential of this compartment is, uh, the electrical potential difference between this compartment and this compartment isn't going to be the correct voltage, basically. And this compartment is in electrical equilibrium with this uh, metal rod and this side of the battery. So, if this compartment's electrical potential changes, bo both of those two's electrical potential changes, and similarly for the trans compartment, if the trans trans compartment's electrical potential goes less positive, then this um, anode's electrical potential is going to go less positive, and so is this side of the battery, and the battery won't like that, basically. It will do what is necessary in order to return the, equal, to return the correct electrical potential difference across between these two. So, if you've moved positive charge from this side, from this trans side to this cis side, what the battery will do is it will move, it can only move electrons, remember, but it will move electrons from this side to this side, basically. And electrons have a negative charge, so they will balance the movement of charge, basically. So, you will get a movement of electrons across there. So in this wire, you're going to have electrons moving, basically. And what you can now do is stick in an ammeter, basically, into this and measure that current. Uh, and basically, that will give you uh, an indication of how much sodium ions are moving through here, because the number of electrons moving through this wire is um, going to be equal to the number of sodium ions moving from trans to cis. So, uh, by putting in that ammeter there, you can uh, get a readout, basically, of how many sodium ions are moving through that channel. And indeed, me doing experiments like this was how people found out, for instance, that gramicidin A, which is an antibiotic, gramicidin A. Uh, gramicidin A is an antibiotic that is produced by a uh, bacterium known as Brevi bacillus brevis, so uh, a certain soil bacterium that I don't believe causes any sort of disease in humans, produces this antibiotic to kill other bacteria. Uh, so Brevi bacillus brevis is a bacterium which lives its life out in dirt, basically. And um, it secretes this gramicidin A, 
and gramicidin A goes into cell membranes and basically just allows uh, cations such as sodium to move through it. It's basically just a pore that you, it's a hole that you make in the membrane and it completely destroys the cell's ability to build up ionic gradients because it will just, you know, it'll just equalize all the ionic gradients that the cell is trying to build up and, the cell, and that will kill the cell. Um, so it's a very effective antibiotic. It's not an antibiotic that GPs just hand out um, willy-nilly. It's, it's a severe antibiotic. It's not a nice drug at all. Um, but it is, it is a potent antibiotic. And experiments like this, electrophysiological experiments like this, could be used to try and understand how it actually worked. Okay, so another potential use for this is if you want to know how the composition of the uh, phospholipid bilayer affects um, the function of the protein. So certain proteins, their function changes as the composition of the lipid by their changes. So, for instance, some proteins are inactivated by PIP2 levels going down in the, in the, um, in the phospholipid by there. So there are lots of different constituents of a phospholipid by there. It isn't just pure phospholipids. And if you want to investigate how the composition how, or, of the phospholipid by there, i.e. how much potentially, how much PIP2 is an example, how much uh, cholesterol you have in there if you want to change those compositions and see how that affects the uh, conductance of uh, ligand of, well, of ion channels, then these experiments or setups are very important.